Hey, you ready? Cheers. Cheers. G'day, everybody, and welcome back to Ranger and Chow. Thanks to those of you who have been supporting us by subscribing, liking, and sharing. We greatly appreciate it. Now, I had a comment the other day from a chap called Bob, or it could actually be Bob O, but I'm not sure about the O, but I'm going to say it Bob anyway. Um, and oh. Bob actually said he would Before be... Before you jump into that one... Uh... Before we jump into that there, Ranger, I do want to let everybody know this will be our new format. We are going to be using the Zoom function for our format now as I live about 26 hours drive away from my good friend Ranger. So he's still in the old location. I'm down by the water. Beautiful view. It's only, it's only, it's only, it's only about two and a half thousand k's. It's not far away. Yeah, look, it was a beautiful drive. Really good with three dogs and a three-year-old in the car. Loved it. But yeah, back to Bob's question because we're finally up to date with our content yeah, so, and so we're living in the real world. Um, his question was to talk about some of the um, hazards or incidents we've experienced driving on the opposite side of the road in foreign countries during our travels. And I thought that's a pretty interesting topic because the, when I was last in Europe, there was a train strike in, um, in Italy, which happens like every week in Italy. Anyway, so we had to hire a car in um, Venice and drive to Paris. And uh, it was on the right-hand side of the road, which is a bit weird because I drive on the other side back here in Australia, as you know. So you and, did the uh, driving? Yeah. Well, we you shared did the driving, did you, Ranger? Yeah, mate, we, shared, we shared the driving. Once I, went, I had a little nap at one stage and I woke up and we were doing 200 kilometres an hour on the autobahn in the rain. So that was, that was pretty fun. I was just, just shit my pants but uh yeah no it was a bit weird you sort of drift over into the opposite lane you know you find yourself doing a little bit of this just, you just know? your mind wants to send you back to where you think's correct eh? that's right it's really unusual and in italy it's even more bizarre they do some really strange things like um forget about what side of the road you drive on bob this is the one that threw me I was sitting at a red light on my scooter in Rome and everyone stopped at the red light, but then the fixed red light stayed on and the amber started flashing. And I, I just had no clue what this meant. And then people were still crossing the road in front of me. So I thought, well, I've got to be cautious here and, and stop. I don't want to run anyone over. And then people behind me started tooting and carrying on, having a hissy fit. So I had to just drive off through the middle of all these pedestrians to a red light. What's with, what's with that? Hey, as long as the fine doesn't come, it doesn't matter. But <laughs> I must say, in my travelling time, when I was over in China, we did a bit of driving over there. Uh, sorry, not China, when I was in Japan. We did some driving in Japan. And they are well, They all look the very... same. You don't know you racist bastard. <laughs> my apologies. Well, I've been to both, <laughs> but the one I did drive in was Japan. Now, they have some wild roads. Like we're talking side winding mountainous roads for about five kilometers where there's no chance you can have to take, but it's a two lane slip. So if you come across someone, one person's reversing for a good couple of kilometers until you get to a point where you can swap over. But Very apart nice. from apart from that madness, when I was younger, I went on a group trip over to Egypt. There's about 20 of us in the group, a lot of my uncle oh, and auntie's man. friends. That, that, and- that would have been so much fun. Oh, mate, it was epic. It was such a good holiday of Egypt there. But at one point, we had a, a tour guide that took us around on a bus most of our trip. So he was with us fairly well through the whole thing. And he was going to do an Australian barbecue for us, you know, just give us a bit of taste of back home. So we stopped <laughs> in this busy as hell street. The whole bus is pulled up on the side of the road. No worries, just block a bit of traffic. And he's jumped out of the bus, gone over to the butcher, where all instructors stay on the bus. Now our bus had, a, like I say, about 20 of us in the group, two people we didn't know, and seven people on this bus were named John. Yeah. So one of the Johns, for whatever reason, decided he'd get off the bus. Now, being Australia, he's got out, looked to his left, stepped straight out, traffic oh, in no. another direction, stepped out in front of a beamer. Now, the beamer was kind enough not to collect him. He swerved into another car, which happened to be an Audi. So oh. 
We have got these people that do not Stupid speak. John, that. John, John, yeah. stay on the bus, you Bloody idiot. Bloody John. He's gotten off the bus. He's caused an accident to very nice cars. These people are all yelling in different languages, a language that we didn't speak. Obviously, pretty upset about their cars. Next thing the guy comes out of the butcher, he's like, oh, everybody calm down. You, back on the bus. I got abused by a taxi driver in Cambodia. I don't blame you. At the, at the, at the airport, there's all these taxi drivers there queued up and they're all screaming out at you to get in their taxi. So anyway, I finally they just selected just call what you rang that's all. Yeah, that's right. Thanks, mate. Anyway, so I finally got this taxi and I went around, opened the door to get in and the taxi driver just started screaming at me, going off his head. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I look in and I see that I'm getting into the driver's seat. It's the opposite <laughs> side of the car. He thinks I'm stealing it. He thinks I'm stealing his taxi. Anyway, uh, that's about anyway. That's about the end well, of my experiences with driving on the wrong side of the road. So I, I did actually miss a step in my Japan China confusion. So when I was in Japan in these death roads, the hire car they give you apparently has this big sticker on the back of it. We thought it was like you know a learner sticker, a P plate sticker, something like that. No, it's a tourist sticker. They know you're a tourist. So when I'm cruising along the highway and all the signs are posted 80 and I'm doing 80 and then finally comes to two lanes and people are just roaring past me, 110, 120, all of them, no worries at all. Not a single person beeps the horn and gets angry. They see that you're a tourist. They go, okay, but they don't abide by their speed limit signs. I think they can have up to 30 Ks over before it's a finable offence. Dude, that, that was that, that's exactly the same in Thailand and Cambodia. Like you see the speed sign there, it says 80 and you look down at the speedo and you're doing 130 and you're like, what the what's hell's the, going on here? What's the point no in that steel that you have used right there? Anyway, hey Bob, look, that, that, that was a really good topic, mate, and something that um, uh, I actually, actually had a bit of fun talking about. It does take me back to some holiday times I quite enjoyed. So thanks for your input, Bob. Uh, anybody else you want us to talk about a subject, just write it on and just chuck it in the comments and we'll talk about it. All right, guys, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button. Make sure you're pushing us along. Get us out there and start enjoying this. We've got a new location here. I'm going to try and work on my camera angles, get ourselves something a little bit more beachy, I think. This is a hard life Cheers. here. Cheers, ciao. Cheers, Ranga. Oh, look, even like I say, even when you're driving on the same side of the road, it's just when you're in another country, nothing.